Hey, what's up everybody? It's Pykel with League of Items, and in this video, I'm going to attempt uh, to do my global League of Legends rankings by league, uh, and then throw them all into the final tier list. Uh, so I'm going to try to do it a little bit faster than I normally would. Uh, let's get straight into it. Uh, we should probably start off in North America. Not sure why I'm clicking around on my screen right now. Uh, so we can go in either direction, but basically I think that um, I'm going to try to rank these teams into their appropriate tier on a global level just to show how the different teams kind of uh, are set up. So for D... Um, we can change this to say, uh, bad in region. Uh, and I think that, I think that it'll, it'll get the point across for most of these teams. Uh, so let's start with, uh, Dignitas, CLG, and Immortals. Uh, and the ranking of these three teams could be switched up a little bit. Uh, in my opinion... Uh, if we're taking all things into consideration, let's see. Right now, Immortals is in last place. Uh, Alorim, Exmithy, Insanity, Apollo, and Hakuho. For Dignitas, we have uh, Lorlo or Viper, depending on the week. Dardock, Phoenix, Johnson, and Afro Moo. And then CLG, we have Deus or Ruin, depending on the week. Wiggly, Pobelter, Stixay, and Smoothie. Um, so I, I've, I'm a big proponent of ranking according to talent. So I think if we're looking at uh, which team is the most talented to win a match tomorrow or this season, I would say that Immortals is probably better than Dignitas and Counter Logic Gaming. Like, if, if, if my life depended on it, uh, I think I'd rather have Immortals than either of those two other teams. I know that their ranking is the lowest in the league right now, um, but if my life was on the line... Uh, next up, we have CLG or Dignitas. So who should be ranked the worst team in the league? Um, I think these two teams played recently. Dig be recently beat CLG, so I'm fine leaving it like this. I like Dardock. I think Dardock's a good player. Um, but that's basically it for the bad in region tier. I don't think that any of these teams have a realistic chance of making it to the... Well, they could technically make it to the playoffs, but they don't have a realistic chance of advancing in the playoffs. Uh, so I would say that this is a separate tier of teams. Next up, we have 100 Thieves and Golden Guardians. I have them in the C tier. I think that um, when we start comparing them to other regions, I might have to drop them down into the D tier. Uh, or maybe the other tiers will just be uh, a little bit larger than I expected. Uh, so 100 Thieves and Golden Guardians, how would we differentiate between those two teams? So for Golden Guardians, we have Haunter, Closer, Demonte, FBI, and Huhi. On 100 Thieves, we have Someday Contracts, Ryoma, Cody Sun, and Poom. Um, I think I like 100 Thieves more than Golden Guardians uh, long term. But if I had to win a match tomorrow, uh, I would pick Golden Guardians' lineup. I think that Contracts is a pretty good young player, uh, but Closer is just on a different level. Uh, than haunt than a uh, contract is right now. Um, Haunter versus someday. I would prefer someday. Uh, yeah, Haunter versus someday. I would prefer someday, obviously. And then if we look at the jungle closer versus contracts, I prefer closer. In the mid lane, Demonte against Rioma. I prefer Demonte. Cody Sun against FBI. That's that's a push. And then Poom against Huhi. That's a push. Like, I know Puma's had a couple of good matches, but we don't really know anything about him. Um, the next team that is kind of between tiers here is uh, FlyQuest. We're going to put FlyQuest in B for now. We're also going to put uh, TSM and Evil Geniuses in the B tier. Um, if, In my opinion, in terms of talent, I think that Evil Geniuses is the most talented out of these three teams. Uh, Huni, Svenskaren, Golden Glue, Bang, and Zazel is the current roster that they're using right now. I think with that roster, they can be competitive in playoffs with Team Liquid and with Cloud9. TSM currently has Broken Blade, Speak Up, Bjergsen, Doublelift, and Treats as their starters. 
Um, the the switching up of the supports is kind of concerning for me, especially when we get to the playoffs. I would rather have somebody like Biofrost, I think, than Treats. Sometimes it's good to shake things up on your roster if it's like dead or if Double Lift is like fighting with Biofrost, but I haven't heard any of those uh, kinds of things. Um, just not really sure if I agree with the move overall. Next up, we have Fly Quest. So we have Solo, Santorin, Power of Evil, Wild Turtle, and Ignar. If I was ranking the mid laners from these three teams, I would have Power and Evil and Bjergsen above Golden Glue, obviously. If I was ranking the top laners, I would have Huni above Solo and Broken Blade. In my opinion, I just think long-term talent, he is the best player out of those three. Um, in the jungle, we have Spika, Santorin, and Svenskeren. Uh, Santorin and Svenskeren are pretty close. I think they're both better than Spiko right now, but Spika could be better than both of them career-wise when it's all said and done. In the bot lane, we have Bang, who is the best out of the three. Double Lift is second. And uh, Mash and Wild Turtle, they go back and forth. Obviously the worst uh, out of those three options. And then in support, we have Treats, Ignar, and Zazel. Uh, I think Ignar is probably the best out of those three players, um, but Zazel and uh, treats tough to differentiate but you have to give the the benefit of the doubt to zazel because he's played longer in the pro scene and has had a decent amount of success next up we have team liquid and cloud nine and i'm going to put cloud nine in the a tier for now because i don't think that compared to other teams in the world cloud nine is s tier that's just how i'm doing my rankings if this was an na only i would probably have it like that but uh um, if it was NA only, it would be like this. Uh, C9, Team Liquid, EG, TSM, FlyQuest, GG, 100 Thieves, Immortals, Dig, and CLG. But uh, the way that I'm going to have the ranking set up for the global, pa for the global um, power rankings is uh, Cloud9 in the A tier. I don't think that um, they'd be able to get much further than that at a... Uh, in terms of talent on a global stage. Uh, so that is my, those are my rankings for North America. Let's go to the LEC. Uh, we're gonna try to keep this moving. So I still think that Schalke is the worst team in the league. They are um, considerably worse than the rest of the teams in terms of um, talent for right now. Maybe their young players are able to mature into something. Uh, Abadage has shown a lot of upside. Gilius is kind of a band-aid right now. Aduamne is kind of a band-aid right now. They're not players that you're going to have long-term success with, in my opinion. Uh, in the mid lane, Abadage, I think he is pretty good. Inox and Neon, they keep going back and forth. Inox seems to be the player that has the higher upside, so I'm not really sure uh, how that's going to shake out. Uh, and then in the bot lane, we have Dreams and Nukes. I think Dreams has probably secured the spot for the rest of the split, um, but I'm also somebody who doesn't like uh, rosters being switched up very often. So that's a negative for me as well. Uh, next up, we have a clump of teams. We have Vitality with Cabochard, Skeens, Melitza, Comp, and Lebrov. Um, Skeens came back this week. Uh, not really a difference maker, in my opinion. Uh, how did they do this week? Vitality went 1-1. One one. So they lost to OG and they beat XL. Uh, speaking of XL... Huh? Huh? XL, there we go. Uh, so XL, I think, is a little bit better than um, is a little bit better than Vitality right now. And I'm not I'm not just saying that because of their uh, recent victory over Vitality. I I have had them as the better team. I was on uh, XL on DraftKings. So Cries, Cadrill, Special, Patrick, and Torre. I think they are a pretty good. A pretty good team considering how young they are. Cadrill, I think, is kind of holding them back a little bit right now. In this meta, you need to have a very good jungler to be competitive, and I don't think that he is a very good jungler. Uh, next up, we have, uh, in my rankings, SK Gaming. Uh, and SK Gaming is is like on the borderline of being in the, in the, um, the, the, the next tier above this because it's pretty tough to differentiate between uh, Origin... I should put Misfits down here. So Misfits is down here now. Uh, Origin. Actually, Origin should probably be down here too. But it's it's tough because like I think all five of these teams are not very good um, globally. But I want them to be 
relative to these other teams as well. So I think because of the amount of uncertainty in the LEC, I'll leave it like this for now. Um, this is the order I think that I would put them in. Misfits has been on a downward trajectory. I think their talent is very good, but something about their team just doesn't make any sense. Uh, they, they've thrown like three or four matches. Uh, so Dan Dan, Razork, Fabivin, Kabe, and uh, Denik or Doss. Uh, I think their support sucks. <laughs> Whichever one of those two is playing, they suck. Uh, so I think that's probably where they'll look to upgrade in the offseason is get a support that has long-term upside uh, and can be the shot caller for the team because, uh, I mean, Kabe, after coming over from TSM, uh, still struggling. And I don't know much about Kabe and his interactions with TSM, but he seemed very, like, passive and standoffish when they would do, like, the TSM Legends videos. Uh, and I don't watch all of those. I only caught a few of them. But that's just the vibe that I got, and I could be wrong, but I can only go based off of what I've seen with my eyeballs. Uh, next up, we have G2 and Fnatic. So both of these teams have underperformed this split, but you have to believe in their talent uh, long term. At least I choose to. Uh, so if we're looking at Fnatic versus G2, uh, we have Wonder against Bwipo. I have a slight preference for Bwipo. I think he's one of the best top laners in Europe, if not the best, probably the best. Self-made against Yonkos. I prefer Yonkos still, but he's shown that he is going in the wrong direction. Um, I, I don't believe in the whole he's a boomer thing, because like, he makes fun of that meme all the time. Uh, I'm not sure if he actually believes it. it. It sounds like he may actually believe it, because after they won the championship, he actually spoke about he's not sure how much longer he can play professional League of Legends, which is definitely the wrong attitude to have. In the mid lane, we have Nemesis against Caps. Caps is much better than Nemesis. Uh, it's not even close. Uh, and then we have Perks against Reckless. Perks has looked horrible since he came back. Um, not really going to go much deeper into that. Uh, then we have Hillisong and uh, Mickey X. They're pretty similar. Uh, so we have our final two teams, uh, Rogue and Mad Lions. And the reason I have them this way is because I like the talent for Mad Lions more than Rogue. And if I'm being honest, I would probably have G2 up above Rogue right now as well. Uh, they did... I'm just going to do it. There we go. Uh, so I think that these four teams are relatively close. I think there is actually... Yeah, there is a there is a separation between these four teams and the rest of the league. I could even have it like this. Um, I don't think that this is where they would end up on a global stage, like in the A tier. But... At least one of them would. Probably two of them would. Uh, I'm not sure if all four could fit up here, but that's just because I haven't done uh, rankings this way in the past. Um, so, Mad Lions, we have a strong young core. Arome, Shadow, Humanoid, Karzi, and Kaiser. I love the way that they pick Ban. I like the champions that they play. I like their uh, roster. I like their talent. Uh, for Rogue, we have Finn, Inspired, Larson, Hansama, and Vander. I love uh, Hansama. I think he's a very good player. He's probably a little overrated, or I'm biased towards him too much because of the style of AD carry that he plays. I like watching AD carries who are willing to flash forward and make an aggressive play uh, when they think that they have uh, an advantage. And I'm pretty sure Hansama is like a Draven player, so that's like, that's like his go-to style is being that aggressive. Uh, and then we have Vander. Vander's been around for a long time. Just a consistent presence. Probably a very good shot caller. Uh, but I'm not sure who the main shot caller is for the team. Larson and Inspired have gotten a lot of the credit. Uh, Finn is a weak side top laner. And then, uh, like I said, I like Hansama a lot. Uh, but if I'm comparing that talent to Mad Lions or G2, I prefer Mad Lions and G2. So this is how I would have it set up uh, for the LEC. Uh, for their region, and I think this one actually fits for the rest of the world as well. Like, I think Immortals, Dignitas, CLG, and Shalka are all in the same level. I think that Golden Guardians, 100 Thieves, and all of these teams are roughly the same. Uh, I, I do think I'm probably a little biased towards North America uh, from these players right here. Evil Geniuses, TSM, and FlyQuest. Uh, but there is some fluidity between B and C. Uh, and... Really, the, the reason for the gap is because I think these teams are significantly better than these teams down here. I think Misfits has the talent to go upwards, but their support problems have been gigantic the entire split, and their macro problems have been gigantic the entire split. Uh, so next up, let's go to Korea. 
Uh, in Korea, we have a very distinct separation as well. So Seoul Hyewon Prince and Hanma Life are the two worst teams in Korea. That is not debatable at this point. Um, Hanma Life, they're really trying to figure out their roster, but they have Lehens and Viper in the bot lane. And Viper plus Lehens has been very good for over a year. They are significantly held down by the rest of their team. Uh, QV will probably not be a professional League of Legends player next year. Haru, not very good. Dudu and Cad are the two players that I would expect to see next year for Hanwell Life, assuming they don't like clean house um, in top jungle and mid. Lava and Miru. Uh, Lava has been pretty bad uh, consistently, but so has Miru in their games this split. Maybe it's because of the weaknesses in top and jungle. Um, I can't really differentiate in the small amount of games that I've been able to... Well, I've watched all the professional games uh, for the LCK, but in my limited amount of exposure to those teams, I haven't seen them performing well uh, because if I saw them in games where they were winning, then I, I would probably have a different opinion of these players. Uh, so just tough to give any of those three credit. Uh, Viper and Lehens were, were depending more on like long-term knowledge about those players. Uh, in the next tier... We have uh, Sandbox Gaming, Team Dynamics, and KT Rolster. Uh, then we have Afrika Freaks above them. I'm just going to set this up because I know exactly how this is going to go anyways. Uh, and then these four teams are at the top. Uh, so let's just, let's just go through this real quick. I think that Sandbox is the eighth best team in Korea right now. I've been pretty critical of Yamato Cannon and the Yamato Cannon signing in general. It's funny because right after they signed him, they went on a few game win streak. I don't think that he had much to do with that, if I'm being uh, totally honest. He already had some talented players on that roster. Uh, so Summit, On Fleek, Fate, Root, and Gorilla. I think that's a pretty good roster. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't find a Korean coach that would be able to like get into the swing of things with the team earlier. Um, but talent-wise... Uh, they have some good players, but uh, I'm not convinced by Root. I think that Fate is pretty good. I know that Summit is good. Uh, on Fleek is questionable for the most part. And Gorilla is a good shot caller, but uh, mechanically not very impressive. Um, and I don't think he ever really was. Like his, his thing wasn't being the most mechanically skilled player in the world. It was playing like very strong champions, like playing Ash Zyra and... Um, being a part of a strong group of players who all thought about the game the same way. Uh, next up, we have Team Dynamics. Rich Beyond, Kuzan, Diokdom, and Guger. I think that Beyond, uh, Beyond, Kuzan, and Guger are all players that should probably not be on a professional League of Legends team uh, in Korea. Uh, Rich and Diokdom both seem to have high upside. Uh, Rich is, mu is much older than people would think for, uh, for a rookie in the LCK because he's coming from the Heroes of the Storm uh, professional scene. So I think we're probably seeing the best version of Rich uh, right now, and it's not very impressive compared to the other top laners that are in the league. Uh, next up, we have KT. So we have Soan and Smeb. Uh, Smeb and Soan, they're pretty similar. I'm not, uh, I'm not overly enthusiastic about either of those players compared to the top laners in the teams above them. Uh, Bono, not very good. Yukal is an interesting player long term, uh, but KT is built to win right now. Uh, a lot of their players are somewhat older. Kuro is not very good. Aiming is is good. So Yukal and Aiming could be on this team for the next five years, and uh, maybe in the third, in the second, third, or fourth year, we actually start to see something. But right now, the way that it's set up, they're not really going to do anything besides beat the lower tier teams and maybe win a split, may, maybe win one round in playoffs. Um, but that's unlikely to me. I think that Afrika Freaks is. Uh, much better than them. Uh, so Keen against Soan or Smeb, I'll take Keen. Spirit against Bono, uh, it's very close. Uh, I think that Spirit's actually a better carry jungler than Bono right now, so I'd probably lean in that direction. Fly against Kuro or Yukal. Uh, Fly is another somewhat older player. Uh, not a huge fan of Fly, not a huge fan of Mystic, and not a huge fan of Ben. Um, but the, all of those players at this point in their career are better than their counterparts on KT outside of aiming. I think aiming is better than all three of those players. So if we get into a an 80 carry focused meta, then aiming 
if if we when we get closer to Worlds and playoffs, we have a team fighting late game eighty carry meta. KT Rolster will probably move above a freak of freaks, but we haven't seen enough changes to justify that movement yet in the ranks. Um, but if you can play that kind of game style, I think that KT Rolster would get a positive bump, and so would uh, so would Honda Life. Uh, so let's go to the next tier. Um, if this was based on like recent performances, then yes, T1 would be the lowest out of all four of these teams. But I believe in the talent of T1. Uh, so let's just go with uh, Gen G first. So we have Rascal, Clid, Ruler. Uh, Rascal, Clid, BDD, Ruler, and Life or Kellen, depending on the match. Most of the time, it's Life. Um, Rascal isn't a very impressive top laner. Clid is a good jungler. BDD is a very good mid laner. Ruler is a very good AD carry. Um, so it's interesting because they're similar to KT where a lot of the players are a relatively similar age, like between one year and two years with one another. So they are, they have a core that could be good for the next two to three years. Um, and maybe long, longer term. It's, it's really unclear how most professional League of Legends players age. Uh, and it depends on how mechanically intense a lot of the like overpowered champions are at, at any one point in time. Uh, cause it's, it's kind of silly to be ageist in that way because i'm sure there are players who are older that have better mechanics than players who are younger like that's obvious that that's the case um but genji uh after their last split they had a lot of problems against the top teams and that is kind of sticking with me i think that whenever they play against t1 i just assume that uh genji might get an early game lead but is going to eventually throw it away to t1 uh so i i have to put t1 above them uh, when you look at Kana has been amazing this split well this season really Kana has been has been like much better than Rascal in my opinion in terms of individual performance uh, in the jungle they have Cuz and Elim I think that Cuz is the better jungler uh, Elim might eventually take over because Cuz does have a lot of games where you're left scratching your head wondering what the hell he's doing um, but still they're both pretty good I do prefer Clit over both of them because um, the fact that he gets consistent first team reps and is the only jungler around um i think that he's certainly better than both of those players and he was t1 starting jungler last year and i think if he didn't move over to gen g i don't think kuz or elim would have taken that spot uh faker uh in my opinion still one of the best players in the world i think that his downfall or his uh downward trajectory is gigantic is is very overstated i'll just put it that way uh still one of the best players in the world Teddy, uh, Teddy's one of the best AD carries in the world. That's undeniable. And then Effort. Effort hasn't looked great this entire split. I think most of T1's problems have come from the jungle and uh, from support not having the like amazing shot caller that they really need. Um, because Faker is doing a lot in all of these games. It's It would probably be better if they had another shot caller to take some of that pressure off of him. Uh, then we have DRX and Damwon Gaming. Uh, right now, I think it's fair to have either one of these teams first uh in their last match they played against one another uh we had drx beating damwon gaming two to one but damwon gaming has looked more impressive uh and i think that's probably just like the flashiness of their victories um at their peaks so let's let's just compare them uh team to team nagri and doran uh i prefer nagri Canyon and Piosic, I prefer Piosic. Showmaker and Chovy, I think that's a that's a uh, a break even. Deft and Caria versus Ghost and Barrel, I prefer Deft and Caria, uh, so I would put DRX number one. Um, and I I think this is actually quite fair uh, in terms of where they would stand globally. I think that all four of these teams have a chance to be like top ten, top fifteen in the world uh, if. If you took any of these teams and put them anywhere else in the world, they'd be competing for a title, in my opinion, uh, even China. Um, and that's that's tough to say because China is very good. And speaking of China, let's start their ranking. Uh, so in China, we have some pretty horrible teams, uh, and then we have some pretty good teams. Uh, and I did some of these rankings earlier today, so I'm just going to run through this one. Um, a little bit faster. So in the bottom tier, we have LNG and Dominus. I think they are quite cl quite clearly the two worst teams in the league. 
Uh, then we have E star uh, OMG Billy Billy Gaming. That's not Billy Billy Gaming. Billy Billy Gaming. Rogue Warriors. Uh, and I'm I'm kind of torn on what to do with RNG, but I'm gonna leave RNG here for now. Uh, they've looked pretty horrible. Uh, this split. Uh, above them, I have EDG, VG Gaming. It's really just EDG and VG Gaming in that tier. And then this is where it gets interesting, because we still have eight teams to go through in the LPL. I think the LPL is very, very strong right now, and some of it might have to do with the parity within the league, where these teams are taking games off one another, um, and we see a lot more of them. So if the LCS or LEC wants to improve how teams view them from across the world, it would probably be smart for them to have more, uh, more opportunities to watch them play. But because of the way that they set it up, uh, there are only so many games they play every single week. Uh, so let's get World Elite, LGD, Sunning, V5, FPX. Um, and FPX has looked pretty bad recently. Uh, and then in the top tier, we have JDG, Invictus Gaming, and Top Esports. So do I want any of this to change? FPX is really the big question mark right now, uh, but FPX, V5, and Sunning are all still playing each other this split, I think, so we're going to get a lot of clarity around those teams. Uh, these are the eight teams in tier A, uh, S and A that I expect to be competing for the championship. I don't think Fiji Gaming, EDG, or RNG, even if they make the playoffs, will be very competitive. Uh, maybe they win a series, but they're not going to... I, I don't think they're going to make a run... Um, so VG Gaming, I like Zika a lot, but iBoy is a big question mark. Uh, pretty overrated right now. EDG has a very young team that also has a lot of experience. Uh, so they're always interesting. Same thing with RNG. I, I like Xiaohu a lot, but uh, they're tinkering with their roster. And their top laner looks pretty horrible. I don't think New is going to last. Um, but that's basically where I have uh, these teams. So now it's time to look at these things from a global perspective um so i'm not going to be too concerned with with ranking the lower tier teams in correct order but when we get to s and a i'll try to rank them in the order that i think they belong so let's try to get the bad teams in here so we have dignitas immortals and clg we have dominus and LNG, and we have Schalke, right? Oh, Hanma Life, Solheiwan Prince, and Hanma Life. Okay, so these are all the teams in the D tier. The D teams, uh, if I was going to put another name on it, it would be the Bad in Region tier. Uh, so, like, for one reason or another, uh, these teams have been basically free wins for most teams that play against them. Uh, <laughs> pretty depressing uh, a lot of these teams seem directionless too so it's like it's not like they're going to instantly be fixed uh in a split and obviously they can that can be the case and that can end up happening uh but i wouldn't bet on it uh next up we have golden guardians 100 thieves uh omg i believe was in that tier origin was in that tier sk Uh, Misfits, SK Misfits, XL, Vitality, Vitality, XL. So we have two, five, two, five, with one team from China. KT Rolster, Team Dynamics. KT Rolster, Team Dynamics. And Sandbox. And then we have RNG, Rogue Warriors, OMG, Billy Billy Gaming, and E-Star. 
so these are the teams that uh, not competitive with top tier teams. Um, and I think that's an important distinction to make because I think most of the teams in C would be the teams from their region that are in D. But they would have a tough time taking games above the teams listed above them. I'm not saying it's impossible, uh, but it is unlikely, in my opinion. Next up, we have Evil Geniuses, TSM, and FlyQuest. We don't have anybody from Europe because I think there is a, a relatively large gap uh, between these teams. Then we have Afrika Freaks. Vici Gaming and EDG. So I think it I think it is kind of important to take notice of the number of teams in B because I think that they show a lot of promise for one reason or another, but they're not able to consistently compete with the top teams from their region. Uh, we can go into some of these teams a little bit more closely. Uh, I will also be doing another video with uh, BVE, uh, Billy, Billy Von Elts the uh, NFL millionaire maker uh, loves League of Legends and we we make videos weekly now so that's pretty great um, so let's continue uh, we have C9 and Team Liquid we have the four four good teams from Europe uh, where's G2 there you go. G2, Rogue, and Fnatic. Then we have no one from Korea. And this tier is made up a lot of teams from the LPL. So basically everyone that... Basically everyone else that's left from the LPL. Except for those three teams in the top tier. Uh, World Elite, V5... Okay, and then in the first tier, that means we have uh, top esports, uh, and then probably DRX, Invictus Gaming, JDG, Damwon, Genji, G, T1, go like that, go like that. Damwon against Invictus Gaming would be a very fun match to watch. Um, so I think that these are pretty accurate with how I feel about each region uh, and it is it is helpful uh, for people to be able to look at this instead of um, seeing it on the spreadsheet so I'll be using this format moving forward um, so actually if, if you want to get any more information about how I look at these teams make sure you try to look for my video tomorrow we're going to be going over every single one of these with uh, with Billy um, and it'll give us an, an opportunity to really de dive deeper into some of these teams and make distinctions between them and also probably rearrange uh, the global power rankings to what I actually think it is. And then we can talk about some of the, the crossing points for different regions. I think that'll be a lot of fun. I enjoy doing it every week uh, as a response to the sham that is the ESPN Esports power rankings. Uh, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to check out the other videos on my channel breaking down a professional League of Legends. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.